Growing up, um, you know, learning about just where we came from as American black people, uh, we would always learn about culture and Kenyan culture and the Maasai was one of the biggest ones. Like, I learned Jambo when I was little to say hello and I don't know, it's cool to come here and then it's like a full circle moment from being a little kid and this seems so far away and like unachievable to now sitting here, it's pretty like surreal. <laughs> this man is very good. Uh, my name is Andrew Jackson. Um, I'm in Kenya to do the migration gravel race. I'm definitely nervous about the race. Uh, I know it's going to be really long, it's going to be really hard, uh, but again, it's like, look at where we're at, like, like it would be a shame to get caught up in the race and like miss all this, you know, like, and not take it in. Uh, so it's like a win-win, you know, like, if I ride well, it's a win. Uh, if I don't ride well, I'm in Kenya riding across Masai Mara 400 miles on a bike. Uh, I mean, there's worse things, like... <laughs> Trying to explain what I do, like my version of cycling, uh, I don't. It's even hard for me to like put into words because I don't want to say I'm a pro cyclist. I've been on a bicycle since I can even remember. Honestly, like I took a motorcycle to show and tell when I was five years old for kindergarten, my, my first dirt bike. Uh, so I was on a bike even before that, and like bikes and motorcycles when I was younger were always like these like hand-in-hand -hand things that we did. I started riding a motorcycle when I was like four, I think. And then by the time I was 13, I was signed to Kawasaki and like basically a developmental deal to turn me pro. Um, and yeah, when I was turning 18, my last year in amateurs, I uh, ruptured my kidney really bad at a race. I was in a coma for four days. You know, as a parent, my parents were like, we don't, this sport's too dangerous kind of thing. And uh, I came back and did nationals one more year. I got a few like top fives. I won a few races that year, um, but that wasn't enough for a top level deal. And that was kind of like me proving to myself I could come back and do it. And if I didn't get signed, I was like, I, let's go to college, do something else. Again, always bikes and motorcycles were like the same thing. So the natural thing was for me to pick up my BMX bike and just start riding that all the time. And uh, I think in like two years after that, I was pro. <laughs> I've been pro for 10 years and traveled most places I wanted to travel to and done, you know, all the tricks that I ever wanted to do. I like, at the end of my career in BMX, it was kind of the same. Like, I was like, I'm not learning anything or pushing myself. Then I tore my ACL and MCL, all my knee, and I kind of written it off and was going to just go to work. I was doing film at the time. Then I picked up a road bike to rehab my knee and then it was that again like okay now I have something new to figure out like I didn't know anything about it. Yeah our drive with Nicholas to Safari. Uh, I mean we got there right? We made it. Um, Yeah, we are going to Navasha for Safari Gravel Race, which is the warm-up for the big race, Migration. Can I try? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, bro. <bruh. laughs> it's really nice. It's actually really nice. I guess we're missing the rider briefing. Yeah, we're on Africa time. Exactly. We get there when we get there, right? Africa time, I feel like, is really similar to black people time in the U.S. I think they're on another level, though. Because Africa time is just like, we'll get there when we get there. Like, you'll ask a taxi driver, like, how long it'll take, and he's like, I don't know. And you'll be like, ballpark, and he's like, I can't give you ballpark, because I don't know how long it'll take. Like, so it's, I think it's cool. We were definitely on Africa time on our drive to safari. Uh, we didn't get there until, like, who knows? <laughs> and had to, like, unpack and get bikes ready, like, in the dark. But it worked out fine. It was good. We're trying to build a bike in the dark. What is, what is that? Did you hear that? <laughs> I'm known at home for being relaxed about everything, I think. <laughs> I'm like the hardest person to make plans with. Again, maybe it's why I get along here so well. Like, if you're there in person, like, yeah, let's go ride or let's hang out or whatever. If you're trying to like plan a date like a month in advance, I'm like, you just gotta hit me up. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing or where I am. Maybe I'll be in Africa doing doing. I don't know. Safari started um, super fast and I think I got dropped or a split happened and I was too far back because I was being me and chilling and didn't get to the start until too late. And then I like moved up and saw a split so I really wanted to be in the front group and like ride with some of the Amani guys. I think I was just hanging on though so I don't even remember much of that. And then it went to a road climb and like all those dudes are just so strong and yeah, left me. I think I am in like this like cool spot and I feel like you only know it if you've like, I don't know, been at like a high level in a sport or like maybe at your job or whatever it is uh, where you're like on this like grind and trying to really make it and you're like almost there but like usually that's the hardest time. Like that's when you're like just like in it. And I think it's cool for me now that I've done it before in a couple of other sports to be able to like stand back and be like, oh God. this is still really fun. Like, like it doesn't matter what place I get. It doesn't matter if anything happens, like nothing, it really, it doesn't matter. So I feel like I'm in this phase where it's like, just enjoy it. The race is totally sure. It's okay. I see your men, they are just trying a lot. How come they, they are climbing hills? It is cold season in area. They are going, going out to Nagasha. This moment, you, you people, you are trying. Yeah. You are trying, you people. You are trying. Hmm? Thank you. I love it. It's so fun. Just all the little kids. I would always be like, push me, push me. <laughs> There's some really, really, really good riding. A dude was in our group with like a Walmart mountain bike and the wheel rolling. He's gone, he dropped me. <laughs> Thank you, you bag and getting ready to head out for migration it's still dark it's like six in the morning maybe i want to take this whole blanket but i won't fit uh stage one what happened in the first day my chain fell off i was in the front and lost the chain is that all that happened my chain fell off 
Oh, see, I was so soft the first day. Like, I was like, I'm out of the front group. I'm done. I started, like, soft pedaling. And then Seth came flying by me. And, uh, and I'm like, well, here's my chance. Here's one of the Amani dudes. I'm following him, and he's just, like, flying. Like, I'm doing, like, 400 watts. More, probably, in his draft. And he's half the size of me. I got with a couple groups, and I just was, like, riding the front and, like, helping people and just like being like the Pied Piper of the ride. Then we got to the finish and I was in like 25th and I was like, okay, so maybe the next few days I should ride. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what to think when I got here, and uh, I've been to Africa before. I've been to South Africa, and I felt like after South Africa, I wanted like some more. And then I come here, and it's just so different than anywhere I've ever been in the whole world. I was in my like early 20s and came to Africa seeing the you know that you're not the minority anymore and you are the majority like you don't ever like no one notices you you just like fit in Now that I'm a little older, it's like, I feel like I relate that, you know, that having a governor that is a black person or a president that's black, like, you know, you can do any, like, there's no ceiling, kind of like there is in America. Like it's, you know, we've had a black president, but that's not, that's like an outlier thing. I see that more and I'm like, I relate it more to the problems back home and maybe me having kids. And I'm like, well, this is why representation is important, you know? We have the Amani Future Training Facility behind me right now. Uh, we're gonna go see the Simba School kids. Is this them? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> we're about to see these kids uh, and go ride the pump track with them. <laughs> Me and my brother, when we were younger, uh, we had a dirt track exactly like what these kids are riding around our yard, and we had like jumps on one side and jumps on the other side, and we'd race it and pretend we were like motorcycle racers. Some of the kids here are riding with no shoes, and I think I probably rode with no shoes until I was like 11, 10, 10 years old. My like ankles are all cut and everything because we just didn't even think about it. When we were riding the pump track, this kid is like out riding me and he's been riding it, what, three months? And now he's on my gravel bike doing wheelies and drifting turns and just riding perfectly. And I feel like it's just something you can't teach. Like he's just got it and it's really cool to see. 267, <laughs> that's solid. Huh? I'm looking at the watts that the little kid did on my bike. 
Yeah, 267, that's probably like, what? Seven. Eight watts per kilo or something. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Stage two was like, nuts. <laughs> Yeah, my descending skills, I gotta like, I gotta show something, right? Like, okay. I do the downhill. Oh, no, so yeah, What's up, boys? What's up, boys? Watch out. I gotta bring it somehow when I come all the way here, so that's what I got. So. <laughs> I think that that descent was my favorite thing this whole like riding wise that was my favorite part of the whole thing it was just like so flowy and nice which is crazy because it's just built by like boda bodas and um cows like and it has like full like flowing berms like the dudes can ride <laughs> Mix my Rice Krispie strategy up, and I should have just stuck with it. I tried to take some other bar because they had more calories, but I should have just taken like 20. Hold on, buddy. How about you? That's good. How's it going for now? Well done, man. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Thanks for like helping us navigate. <laughs> but it was good, bro. You're so quick on these downhills, eh? I gotta do something. Yeah. Because I can't climb very fast. And every time I get yeah, to the yeah, bottom, yeah, you were at the back. And by the bottom of the downhill, you're miles ahead of everyone. Oh yeah. yeah. Awesome. No, I let him go. Yeah. I had to do something. I'm so disgusting right now. Yeah, everyone was telling me that I couldn't eat Rice Krispies all day, and I tried to switch it up, and now I'm going back. Because <laughs> I ran out of food. <laughs> oh, I cracked my rim. Oh, shit. Oh, all right. You ready for a long day? <laughs> It's gonna be like a hundred mile pedal now. Yeah. When we were up on that like grassy ridge plain, like that was really crazy. I was like a couple times I just like stopped pedaling and like looked around and was like this is nuts. But no one gets to like see this. That's not good? It's, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was good. It, it was You're good. Not happy. No, I'm happy because my teammate won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we got two slots in podium. Yeah, so Lim and me like immediately just like clicked. It's like, it is. It's like having like a brother from like the other side of the world. It's nuts. Uh, like he's into cars and like we even have like we were both into Subarus like I had like new shocks and everything though. like no back seats in it it was like a race car <laughs> <laughs>
You know Omarion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. That, this dude called Diamond. Yeah. It's so similar to home, like sitting here, like listening to music outside, kicking it at the house, like, like trading songs off. I feel like I'm like back in LA. Again, not taking it too seriously. I feel like we really get along on that. Like he's like, obviously he works really hard. He's an amazing rider. Like he did top five here on a couple of the stages, but he like never lets it go to his head. Like he doesn't walk around like he's anyone or think he's better than anyone else. You built the whole yeah, house? Yeah, it was just The whole house? Yeah, yeah. Here, Ryan. And here's a kitchen, like it's not even like, still my love to be a dad. You're here now? Yeah. I never slept in the mattress in the first 13 years. Like, oh, I was just sleeping the floor. on the floor. Really? Yeah. We just hoping at some point things will be okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like sometimes this motivates me when, when I'm down, when I feel like there's something disturbing me or something. It's going wrong. Yeah. I just flash back and yeah. everything's. Damn. And then I become very yeah. happy. Because, you know, it's just, I had to struggle so hard to be accepted. Um, and I think Salim kind of had the same feelings about him going to Europe and racing in Europe and all these things. Uh, and it's funny because both of us now are less focused on ourselves and more focused on the next generation being like, you know, I don't want, he doesn't want them to have to struggle the way he did. Like they're building the Amani team house and like, the same with me like i do it so that at least there's someone out here doing this uh so hopefully the next person maybe can see that and be like okay i want to grow up and go do it that way yes yes we roast yeah we boil mm -hmm. We eat the whole thing. <coughs> oh, the brain. Oh, you don't eat that. Yes. Normally, I take from the mouth. Really, from the head. It is, it is ugly to use the cup. Oh, the so best you can't is do it. You take it from the pot, from the skin. neck of the skin. Oh, and drink it straight. Yes. Are you ready? Nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's really nice. What's that, the hair people? <laughs> I was going to sleep last night and thinking I had 120 miles to ride today which is like, before that's the hardest gravel race I've ever done, I think. And that I would like train for, for like months and like sleep early. And now I've been like, you know, just winging it basically, like going from camp to camp and then going in to do 120 miles and race it like full out and like not think about it is like, I think I'll be okay. I'm tired though really tired. Getting the bags packed, getting into the truck, because every day it's like this moving circus. I realize it. I don't know what I did with my kit from yesterday, <laughs> as I say that. You're getting all this together in your tent in the dark, and it's just so hard to like keep it all organized and pack. And you're trying to think, okay, I got to do a race in an hour. Three. Uh-oh, I'm running low. It's only four hours worth. It's like packing for a trip, like, as you're going to the line. It's, like, crazy. All right, man, good luck. How is that accomplished? We made it to the start on time. 6.29. I think what inspires me about Amani and what I relate to is just like, I have a lot of respect that they want to do it differently and like their own way. Like, it's one thing to like, you know, almost like ask for a handout or help. And they're like, no, we don't need help. Just like, you know, support us and what we're already doing. Like, we don't need to like be taken under the wing of like Europe or anyone else. 
how much cooler can it get than being in Africa, like around wildebeest and like riding through the Maasai, like it doesn't get more like adventure or gravel than that. Like who has 400 miles of gravel roads like that work and connect and yeah, it's nuts. I think it's all the same thing of like, we're just gonna do this our way and you guys can come or not, it doesn't really matter. Like, Again, I like kept thinking back like, cause I've never raced 400 mile days in a row on road, let alone on the roughest, hardest gravel race I've ever seen in my whole, we don't have anything like what we were riding here. I think I impressed myself that I was able to do it and race it, not just ride it. Like I didn't, I honestly didn't know if I was gonna be able to do that. So I think I like came away like feeling pretty proud about that I was able to do it. You got a good thing <laughs> I want to see the smile of this guy. He's ready. He, back. he can do the race next year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>